Hi everybody. Uh, today we're doing a review of the Alley uh, battery meter for monitoring a um, solar uh, charging system. So let's get with it. So here you can see the monitor uh, working um, and uh, there is the solar system electronics um, and um, first question is do you really need one of these things so the answer to that is uh, if you want to know um, what your battery capacity is uh, how many amps are still left in it uh, then the answer is yes uh, if you don't care about that, then no. Um, now, on my charge controller, let me just get that here. So, on the battery setting, it's telling me that I've got 13.6 uh, volts. Uh, it will also say that it's... Uh, pulling in right now, let's say 8.8 .8 amps from the um, the uh, solar panels. Now 14.7 amps from the solar panels. This is a 12 volt system, two 100 amp hour 12 volt batteries, lithium iron phosphate. So, it's telling me how much uh, power is going uh, or being generated by the panels, but um, my inverter is also supplying a load to the system. So, out of that 14.8 uh, amps, uh, 7 point amps, or 7.8 amps are being used by these grow lights. And so, if I want to know what's happening to my battery, I can see that the net effect is 6.9 amps is going into my battery. Uh, that's how much is left over after the 7.8 amps uh, is delivered to the grow lights. So, the battery is charging while uh, a, a load is on the system. Uh, the load is less than the uh, power being generated. So, what can I information can I get if I press volts? I it's showing 13.44. However, notice that's a little bit less than the 13.6 here. Uh, I'm not worried that much about the the difference. It's not that much. Um, you can see again that the um, the solar panels are generating 14.7 amps, but um, uh, we'll go back to here on their amps. Six point uh, the battery's being charged at almost seven amps. Now, uh, if I press the amp button again, uh, you can see. It tells me my battery capacity in amp hours. So I've got 129 amp hours out of 200. And if I want to see it displayed as percentage, I can press this button over to the right. And you can see that the battery bank is 64.7% charged. Now, before this, uh, that was unknown. I mean, you, you, you see this, this thing is showing my battery totally full, but it's, it's only two-thirds full. So this is misleading. Uh, and the monitor up there is the same thing. It's on the same EP Ever system, and it's giving me misleading information on how much uh, uh, battery capacity has been used. Uh, and the voltages, if you try to... Um, figure out 
what your capacity is from your voltage on a lithium iron phosphate battery, you're just fooling yourself. Uh, it's going to vary tremendously depending on whether it's on uh, resting in a resting state, whether the battery's uh, under load, or if it's being charged. Uh, the, the voltages will go all over the place, and even under those conditions, it's n there's no consistency, and there's just no way to even guesstimate a, a halfway approximation of what the charge state of the battery is from just the voltage. So, what this thing does is, when you first set it up, you, you calibrate it. And uh, you calibrate it either by draining the battery to zero and, uh, and, and pressing uh, and holding this button for several seconds, or you charge it up fully, which is what I did, and after the battery is fully charged, you, you press and hold this button, and it calibrates it to 100% charge. And then from then on, it just tracks how much energy is going into the battery and coming out of the battery, and um, it, it knows uh, what the current state is. And it, it seems to be highly accurate. Uh, w when this solar system charges this battery up to full, and I press percentage over here, it's going to say something like 99.8% charged, or saying I've got 199 point something uh, amp hours in it. I mean, it's right, almost, almost perfect. So, I, I've been pleased with that. Uh, it does what it says it's going to do. Now, on this installation, uh, that I had a little fussing with. First problem I had, let me get this uh, reflector thing out of the way. The first problem I had was uh, these uh, connectors... Uh, terminal uh, posts are 3 8 inch. You need a 3 8 inch lug. And I had purchased this big pack of 5 16 inch lugs, which I was using on all my other connections. So, uh, I, I had to get new lugs and or drill out the 5 16 lugs so they would fit on the posts. So, I mean, it's not... A, a problem unless you don't have the right size lugs. Uh, so that's just one thing to, to uh, keep in mind. The next problem I had was there is a small wire that goes from the positive terminal of the battery. So this, this is my positive bus bar going to the battery here. Um, and then it goes onto the back of the... Um, the uh, shunt and the shunt uh, if you mount it the way I've got it mounted here that wire connection is on the back so if you've already mounted it to the wall you have to take it back off the wall to get that battery stuck in there and then an, an th another problem with this is uh, those the terminal that you stick that thing into is sort of like a hybrid between a clip and a screw. So there's a screw there and I could, I tried first putting a ferrule at the end of the wire. Uh, it was 22 inch uh, uh, stranded wire and the, the wire just kind of bent trying to uh, stuff it in there. So then I tried, um, or actually the, the ferrule, a 22 gauge ferrule wouldn't even fit in that hole. So I, I had to cut the ferrule off. Uh, and then when I tried to just do it with the wire straight, the wire strands bent. Then I tried soldering it, but the soldered and uh, soldered end of the wire to just stiffen it so I could then stuff that uh, tinned tip into the connector that didn't fit securely so I ended up replacing the stranded wire with a 22 gauge solid wire 
and that worked. Uh, but it it just seemed like a a big fuss just to get that little wire from the shunt to the positive terminal of the battery, and um, uh, I um, you know I I thought that was uh, unnecessarily difficult uh, and inconvenient, and they do not supply that wire. So when you go to get your wire, I would recommend a 22 gauge uh, solid uh, uh, core wire for that. Um, so, and then when you connect the shunt, you can see the shunt, the main wires connect directly to the battery so that all power has to go through that shunt. Uh, so, and it, if you don't wire your system that way, it won't be able to track all the energy going to and from the battery. The other downside is if you were to plug a charger directly onto the battery terminals, uh, rather than, let's say, onto the bus bar, or the upper terminal of this shunt, um, then the battery would be by the battery charger would be bypassing the shunt and that would not be able to measure the charge that you're putting into the battery and then you would lose your calibration so just just a thing to keep in mind so if you make a mistake and do that you'll have to recalibrate your um your uh battery monitor uh the other thing that uh, I would have preferred, uh, but I knew this going in, is to have a display, a bigger display that displayed more information like this, rather than having to keep pushing buttons to toggle from one mode to the other to get the information that I want. Um, so, but again, I knew that going in, but I, I'm just saying, if I could find a similar quality shunt that could measure the direction of flow in both directions, because not all the shunts do that, um, uh, that would have been preferable. Uh, and then the mounting is a bit difficult, uh, depending on your setup. My panel is too close to the wall. This is designed to be uh, stuck inside the face of a, a panel and um, you can see from this picture how far that goes back so your your panel has to be a significant distance from the wall to be able to have room to insert the the monitor so what I did was I took a thin sheet of plywood and a hole saw and I drilled a a hole in there that matched the diameter of the monitor and I friction fit that into this piece of plywood and then I friction fit the plywood uh, under this this wire from the uh, electrical box uh, going up to the wire up there so that that's working for now this, I this is a temporary setup uh, I'll make a probably make a fancier uh you know panel for it uh later on depending on how things go but the monitor works great uh it's not it's easy to use uh and i would just um pay attention to the um the the things that i was mentioning uh which uh, when you hook it up and you, you, you make those connections, you, you need to, to be aware of uh, in order to uh, connect it properly. So uh, I hope you found this uh, information useful if you're considering uh, getting this particular monitor. Thanks for watching.